Hey guys, it's Tiffany here. I wanted to do a quick video on my updated fine jewelry collection. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Past year, I've really been getting into fine jewelry. It's something I've been investing a lot of my time and also just learning more about gemstones and gold and so forth. And I'm excited to share with you guys a couple of new pieces that I've added in my collection. I actually got engaged this past year recently. So the number one piece of jewelry that I get asked about most is my engagement ring. And you can tell here that I actually went for a sapphire center stone. Growing up, blue has always been my favorite color and my fashion icons have been Princess Diana and Carolyn Bissett. So for me, I really wanted a piece that really exudes my fashion inspirations and also my personal style. So a little bit about specs of my ring. It's a royal blue Ceylon sapphire set in 18 karat white gold surrounded by natural diamonds. I learned a lot about sapphires and essentially they're similar to diamonds. There are lab grown, there's natural. I went natural and then within natural there's a lot of different sapphires from all over the world. I went with Ceylon which is Sri Lankan sapphires because they're my personal favorite um, and also they have my favorite shades of blue are from Sri Lanka. Um, within Ceylon sapphires they're heated and unheated. 95% of sapphires are heated which means they're heat treated and 5% are unheated. My stone is an unheated stone so basically this is a naturally um, natural color of the sapphire. It's um, a little over five carats the center stone and it is an oval shape and then you can tell the diamonds set around it. It's similar to Princess Diana's where it has 14 round diamonds surrounding the oval but I wanted to make it a little bit unique and add my own personal twist so I added two pear shaped diamonds on the side and yeah that's my engagement ring. It's my favorite piece in my collection. It's super personal. Uh, my fiance was very supportive of me being part of the designing process so that I make sure that I had exactly what I wanted. And honestly, I think it was such a great idea because we wear this ring almost every day. So I think us girlies should definitely be a part of the designing process. So I'm obsessed with it. I love it. And if you have any specific questions about the ring or purchasing a sapphire please let me know in terms of jeweler we went with a family friend of his who is a jeweler for anita co anita co does a lot of beautiful diamond work but also a lot of gemstone work so yes that is my sapphire since we started off my with my engagement ring i think it only makes sense for me to continue with other rings in my collection. So I'll start off with the oldest piece in my collection. It is this Cartier Love ring in white gold in the standard size. So this is um, five and a half milliliters wide. Uh, you can tell it's been well loved, um, well worn. I bought it vintage. It was one of the first designer pieces of jewelry that I ever bought for fine jewelry. And for me, I have back and forth thoughts of whether or not I want to sell this piece. Obviously, the Cartier Love Ring is so iconic. It has stayed in style for so many years and, you know, every time I think about selling it, I look at how much it costs retail and it always throws me off because it's essentially doubled in retail price. So I've been keeping it because I always know, like, I'll probably go back to it eventually and now that I have an engagement ring that is also in white gold I'll probably be wearing more of my white gold pieces and yeah it's very classic it's definitely a very like hefty piece of jewelry it feels very substantial and yeah I totally understand the hype over love rings and I think it will only continue honestly. The next two pieces I want to talk about are my more daintier gold um rose gold rings. So the first one is actually just one from Etsy. It's half diamond, just half gold, and they're not really like super bright diamonds, but essentially they're like little marquee style. It's a very dainty ring, nothing crazy, and 
I don't know, if you want to stack or if you want to layer with other pieces, it's super easy to do that. I really love this ring. My next ring is my Tiffany T wire ring. So this is in rose gold and diamonds. You can tell here it's super, super pretty. This is probably my most worn everyday ring. It's really easy. It fits super comfortably. It looks super, super pretty on the finger. I think for me, it's such a versatile ring. I love the Tiffany T collection. And given my name is Tiffany, I have a bias to the brand in general. And I love Tiffany diamonds. So I really, really love this piece as well. And now I'll be showing my latest piece of my ring collection. It's definitely a very big purchase and one that was for my recent birthday. It is this Bulgari Serpenti Viper Ring in white gold with diamonds. This is insane. It's gorgeous. It's diamonds all around. It's super beautiful. It's a hefty piece, but not too heavy. And I think it's the perfect size because they have many different versions of this ring but this one because i don't have the longest fingers and like cut off my finger in a way that i think makes it look stubby it's very elegant when i was in the store i actually tried on i'll insert a video of me with the different types so i tried on the rose gold the gold and the white gold and typically i would go for regular yellow gold but for some reason the way that diamonds shine with white gold I've really just been leaning towards that recently I think probably because of my engagement ring so I decided to go with white gold and honestly don't regret it it's so pretty it sparkles so gorgeously in the light and I think I've never really ventured into Bulgari jewelry um because I've always just love Tiffany a lot so it was really nice to you know expand into a brand that is also super heritage and of course the Serpenti um, Serpenti ring is one of the most iconic so I am really really happy to have this in my collection so next I'll get into the easiest um, category of jewelry which is earrings because I don't actually have um, pierced ears I have virgin ears, no holes in them. And so I only have one pair of fine jewelry earrings. They're actually like twist-ons. Um, they're from Mikimoto. There are two Okoya pearls about eight, seven and a half, eight millimeters set in 14 karat white gold. They are pretty nice on. Honestly, they, they look pretty substantial on, so. I'm a huge fan. I really like them. And they're really elegant and timeless. And who can't love a Mickey Moto Pearl? Like, they're the most iconic brand. And yeah, I think I'll have those probably for the rest of my life because they're just so nice and so effortless. The next um, section I'll get into are my fine jewelry necklaces, which is probably the most pieces that I have personally. Um, I'll start off with these two, it's basically like a couple's necklace that me and my fiance have. So these were gifted by my future mother-in-law. They're from Cho Tai Fook and basically they are, ooh, is that focusing? Yeah, it's 24 karat gold. This is a dragon and this one is a phoenix and they are absolutely absolutely gorgeous they are very hefty about 12 to 14 grams of gold and we all know how much gold has gone up in price and they're very easy to wear because you can adjust the length so you can wear it as a choker you can wear it as a pendant and it's just something so meaningful because it was a introductory gift that my future mother-in-law gave me when I first met her for the first time. And it just felt so special because I think, you know, having the matching pair with my fiance is just so nice. So in the future, if we ever do want to wear them together, we totally can. And it's such a unique design. And I get a lot of compliments when I wear 
this pendant out. Next piece um, I'll get into is also a 24 karat gold piece from Hong Kong. And this was actually gifted to me by my father in middle school. So probably the earliest piece of jewelry I have in my collection still. You can tell I'm born the year of the dog. So it's this beautiful cute dog with a hat. And it's set in 24 karat gold with little diamonds and a white gold chain. I love the mix of metals in this piece. So when I wear this piece, I can mix it up with any other metal type. It's aged so nicely. I also can't believe like how cheap it was compared to how expensive gold is now. I think my dad bought this for like less than a thousand HKD and that's like unfathomable these days given how much the prices have went up but I love this piece it's super fun to wear it's timeless and something that I will always keep because it just has such a sentimental value for me um, given that my father bought it for me and it has my zodiac sign on it the next piece in my collection I want to talk about is actually from also from my father and this is a custom piece that he had made when I turned 19 from a family friend. So my family friend is a pearl farmer in Japan and I really was into South Sea pearls at the time and I wanted a gold one. So my father had this created with a little diamonds for the pendant and set in 14 karat gold. So this is super super elegant. It I love when I wear this because I get a lot of questions on what it is even because I think South Sea pearls are getting more popular but they're not so mainstream yet that people are fully aware of them. People usually think it's just like a interesting way of like a gold orb or something but it's actually a pearl. This one is quite large, it's 13 millimeters wide and it's perfect. It's flawless and it's a deep gold color. I feel super elegant when I wear this. It's an absolute timeless piece and I could never see myself parting with it um, just because, you know, my father had it made for me and it has a really deep sentimental value for me as well. So next I'll get into my actual designer fine jewelry pieces and necklaces. So I don't have many, I just have two. The first piece, of course, I think most people have one of these is a vintage Alhambra pendant. So mine is in the Grey Mother of Pearl and set in rose gold. It is so so pretty. I knew I only wanted one of these in my collection so I made sure to wait for the perfect combination and for me I really wanted a rose gold chain because my favorite metals I will say are rose gold and then probably white gold and then yellow gold and um, when this combination came out it was perfect because I wear a lot of neutral colors so gray just pairs so well with it. Um, I get a lot of compliments obviously when I wear it. I think Van Cleef, the Alhambra has become incredibly popular recently so I see a lot of girlies wear it but not in this combination so I feel you know a little bit in my deranged way a little bit more special but I love this piece um, my fiance bought it for me when we went on holiday and yeah I don't think I'll ever get rid of it and I think I will never buy another um, vintage Alhambra just because I don't really believe in buying multiples of a certain jewelry style so the last piece um, of my fine jewelry necklace collection is my Louis Vuitton pendant. It's an 18 karat white gold. I bought this many years ago. I actually don't think they make this style anymore. I think they make a similar style. But it's really simple. 18 karat gold chain LV pendant. Um, at the time I was more into logos so I bought it and I'm going to say I don't wear it a ton because I'm not a really logo person but sometimes I'll layer it because it, it's fun to layer with um, if I'm feeling a little bit more flashy but in general I don't wear it too much but I don't actually want to get rid of it either because I don't know it's a fun piece and I know it'll be timeless because the LV logo is pretty timeless so that is my LV white gold pendant. So the last 
two pieces I'll be sharing with you are actually both from Cartier and they are the only fine jewelry that I own in the bracelet um, category. So the first ever, I guess, designer bracelet I ever bought in the fine jewelry space is this small Cartier Love bracelet in yellow gold. I love the small size of the Love bracelet. This one's in size 16. I just do not really like the way that the normal size one looks on my wrist, but the thin one looks very pretty. So I really, really love this. And I thought it only made sense to pair it with a Juste en Clou. So I got in the small size. This one's also in yellow gold with diamonds. My fiance bought this when we first started dating. It was a very generous gift of him and I tried it on in the store and he, it was one of the few times where he was like, you need to get this piece. So um, for a guy to say that I think is pretty crazy, um, especially a lot of them are not really into jewelry. So I feel like it's a piece I don't regret. I love it a lot and I love stacking the two together. I don't wear them out normally because um, I live in New York City and that it's sometimes a little scary to wear a lot of fine jewelry pieces outside but um, when I go to like a nice dinner or if I go to like a nice event or a holiday party I definitely will bring out my Cartiers because they're timeless, they're beautiful, and they're super dainty. So that's a little bit about my new updated fine jewelry collection. As you can tell, I don't have a ton of pieces. My collection's relatively tailored. I try to be very thoughtful with every purchase that I buy. I'm not trying to build the largest collection, just one that fits my everyday needs. And if I don't feel that I wear things, I am more inclined to sell them. I kind of have switched my mantra towards you know, luxury items in the past year, I really believe more in utility. And if I'm not reaching for things, I definitely um, don't believe in keeping them. But regardless, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I personally really like watching these videos. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.